Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Reed and I am the Manufacturing Applications Manager at Go Engineer. Today we are going to be talking about the Stratasys nylon family. We're going to go over some of the material specs, some of the best use applications, and some case studies so that you, the viewer, can choose which is the right material for you. Before we jump into the Stratasys formulated for 3D printing nylon materials, let's just talk about nylon uh, in general. Nylon is a thermoplastic that's widely used in industry uh, for many different reasons and de many different cases. It can be used in textiles. Uh, we see it a lot in consumer electronics. Automotive might be the number one or number two industry using nylon of one blend or another right now. Aerospace and medical device as well. It's used widely for a couple different reasons. One, it has uh, the ability to be processed with many different manufacturing processes. We can injection mold it. We can extrude it into a fine, thin wire. We can blow mold it or roto mold it or thermoform it, etc. And the second reason and probably the more important reason is nylon has many desirable properties. It has great strength, both compressive and tensile strength. It's well known for its elongation and its flexibility. We like it because it's very abrasion and fatigue resistant, and it also has a desirable coefficient of friction. So when it comes to 3D printing and FDM in particular, which blends do we have available to us? Right now, we have our materials split up into groups. We have a general group that's essentially ABS and ASA, so styrene-based materials. These are our go-to general purpose materials under the Stratasys FDM technology. Then we have what we call our engineering grade materials. These are our polycarbonate materials, polycarbonate ABS blend, an ISO certified polycarbonate, but also two blends of FDM nylon. We have FDM nylon 12 and nylon 6. Then in our high performance category, which is most well known for the Ultim materials, which have always been our flagship materials in terms of greatest strength, greatest stiffness, greatest chemical resistance, and uh, in, in terms of certifications, they hold the most. But the newest material in that category, the Nylon 12 CF, in my opinion, is one of the most exciting materials that we have available in our arsenal now. So those are the three materials we have. Nylon 12, which was the original nylon material. It's been out for a couple years now. Nylon 6, which came out last fall. And Nylon 12 CF, which is just, was just recently released within the past month. So let's go in that order. Nylon 12, the original nylon, it was most welcome because it represented a shift in the applications that we could use FDM for. It was the first material that was really truly flexible and abrasion resistant. I kind of highlighted some of the material characteristics that make Nylon 12 unique from the other polymer blends. The fatigue resistance and the elongation at break were unparalleled at the time. Uh, this is great for a, a wide variety of applications, but in particular, it's great for matching up functional prototypes to your eventual end use part. It does have strong chemical resistance, and it's chemically resistant in a way that's different than the ultimate materials. An example of this I, I ran into about a year ago was at a foundry where we were evaluating 3D printed patterns for sand casting. And this particular foundry did not use green sand. They used a sand mixture that had a phenolic uh, ad adhesive in, within it. And the only material within our FDM lineup that best fit for that application with the phenolic adhesive was nylon, more so than the Ultims or the PC or even the PPSF. Also has a high degree of toughness. 
Toughness is great for shop floor applications, parts that are going to get banged around that need to absorb energy, whether it's just impact energy or bending. So, and then lastly here, the high Z strength. This is a key aspect of nylon 12. All FDM materials are anisotropic. That means we have different mechanical properties in the XY layer than we have through the XZ plane. Nylon 12 is the least anisotropic. So put other words, it is the most isotropic material. Uh, you're going to see less of a degradation in the mechanical properties through the Z in nylon 12. Nylon 12 is available in three different resolutions, 7,000s, 10,000s, 13,000s. This is the most flexible of the nylon grades that we have available to us. The other materials are going to be more limited, as we'll see. The best fit part features for Nylon 12 are parts that have snap fits, especially repetitive snap fits. Think of something like a ratcheting mechanism. Or parts that will have press fit inserts, inserts that would have typically cracked ABS or PC because they don't have the same toughness as Nylon or parts that are going to go through some post-machining. The Nylon 12 is highly machinable. What machines is this available on? You know, when, when we're asking the question, which is the right nylon for you, uh, availability becomes a, a huge concern. Nylon 12 is available on the greatest number of machines. They are the production Fortis line machines, but it's the entire lineup. So starting with the Fortis 380 and its predecessor, the Fortis 360, on the high heat 400 series machines, the 450 and its predecessor, the 400, and the flagship Fortis machine, the 900, all of these are capable of printing in nylon 12. Best fit applications for nylon 12, functional prototyping is going to be number one. Number two is probably going to be manufacturing and tooling. Uh, shop floor or assembly line replacement parts, these would be a good fit. Jigs and fixtures would be another one. Anything that's going to be roughed up, thrown around the shop, dropped on the concrete, nylon 12 is going to be a good fit. Vibration resistant components, things like covers and panels, these might be prototypes, but honestly they could also be production level parts. Industry's best fit is going to be automotive and consumer goods and probably manufacturing as well. I do have a quick case study for Nylon 12. This comes from a company called Red Dot. They were one of the beta users for Nylon 12. They are an HVAC company. They create a lot of parts similar to what you see here. You know, complex parts, some of them more complex than others. Some of these, you know, you could turn on a lathe fairly easily. Others would not be so simple to prototype. And that was their number one concern. Got a nice little functional impeller here in a polycarbonate housing. And another thing that I haven't touched on is on those Fortis level machines and with nylon, we're able to print parts that are very fine features, very small features. These are some prototypes that are buttons that snap fit together. That snap fit is an important aspect of Red Dot's designs. So like I mentioned, they design and build HVAC systems. Their number one problem when they were evaluating the new nylon material was that the molded parts that they were getting from vendors were not meeting their expectations and they were causing delays in production because they'd have to go back and redo the tooling and redo the design. The reason why their injection molded parts weren't meeting specs were that they weren't prototyping using a similar material. Due to, due to the geometry of their parts, they weren't injection molding uh, prototypes and due to the snap fit requirements, they weren't 3D printing their prototypes. What they were doing was machining metal prototypes. And while they worked, they weren't properly simulating the functional snap fits and the shock resistance of the their eventual end use parts which were nylon. And so they were discovering design flaws after 
committing to the tooling. And they had problem keeping the production on schedule because of the delays in that situation. So their solution was a Nylon 12 prototype. The Nylon 12 prototype was more similar to the final product. It could withstand the functional testing and it confirmed or denied their design earlier on in the process. If you read the case study from Stratasys, it's pretty interesting. One of the big takeaways is that Red Dot was able to shave off months of time in their design cycle. And they were also able to avoid a lot of costly retooling or actual new molds as well. Nylon 6. I like to think of Nylon 6 as the big brother to Nylon 12 in terms of mechanical properties and, and use cases. Here you see a jig. Pretty organic shape. This would not be something that would be fun to machine or mold or weld together, but with 3D printing, complexity is free, designs are more intuitive, and our parts are created quicker. The material characteristics for Nylon 6, it has greater strength than Nylon 12. The strength really rivals Ultim 9085, which is, says a lot. Four years ago, three years ago, Ultim 9085 was our flagship material. It could not be beat. And now we have a few different materials that really outshine and Nylon 6 is one of them. It has the strength of Ultim 9085, but it has the same toughness that was so important to Nylon 12. The stiffness has improved over Nylon 12 and the aesthetics are actually better than Nylon 12 as well. The aesthetics of Nylon 12 were one of the disadvantages, I would say. Uh, customers expected the nylon parts to look a little bit better. Uh, they didn't look quite as smooth or refined as you know, the ABS or the ASA parts that we're used to seeing. Now, aesthetics weren't usually the number one concern for users of nylon, uh, but we were able to get better aesthetics in Nylon 6. We lost the 7 thou slice height that we had on nylon 12. Nylon 6 is 10 and 13 thousandths only and we also are more limited on the machines. This is a 900 MC material only right now. Okay, so it's it's on the big gun flagship machine. That may change in the future. This is something that Stratasys has said will be reevaluated, but for now it's the Fortis 900 alone. The applications here Low volume end use parts. This was probably the second or third material in the first nylon that we could really use in a production environment. And that's probably one of the reasons why it was put on the Fortis 900, which is in, really intended for production use. We can create parts that are used and sold in their 3D printed form. Now, it's also good for functional prototyping, particularly if you're using a nylon 6 or a nylon 66 or a nylon 610 material in your end use part the prototype is going to be very representative of that manufacturing and tooling is a big one jigs and fixtures again and also going back to the low volume end use parts things like gears fittings and bearings Components that you might be replacing on products you sell or your manufacturing equipment or your assembly line stations. This would be a good fit material for that. We got a use case for nylon six. What you're looking at here is a fairly large part with that Fortis 900 build envelope being 36 by 24 by 36 inches. We can get these big large parts. This is a replacement of a thermoform part for the automotive industry. The problem with the thermoform prototypes were that they were expensive and they were very time expensive, very long lead times. And so what the customer wanted, and we, we can't, Stratasys wasn't able to publish the customer name. It's an automotive OEM. They needed a prototype housing that was actually rugged, rugged enough to perform the fit tests and the maintenance procedure checks. It also needed to be able to withstand the chemicals found on the shop floor without deforming. 
And also a bonus would be that the prototype would have been visually representative of the final product. Their thermal, their thermal form prototypes were not. You can see some of the features here. This is eventually an injection molded part. So you have bosses and ribbing that you wouldn't be able to achieve with a thermal form prototype. We're able to get that with the 3D printed prototype. By building the Nylon 6 prototype in-house, you turn this design cycle and prototype cycle into one that measures in days rather than weeks. A part that large is probably taking uh, less than 100 hours to create. And that's lights out 24 hours a day. The benefits they saw with Nylon 6 were similar characteristics to the final Nylon 6 fiberglass filled housing, which again was injection molded. Ability to withstand uh, handling during the maintenance procedure, that's the toughness coming into play. Enduring the vibration and fatigue tests, this is an important aspect. If you can't do all the testing you need to, then you have to wait until you have the tooling done and the final products done to go into some of these uh, life cycle testing. All right, Nylon 12 CF. This is the material I've been uh, looking forward to talking about. Like I said, we, we've had this for a little over a month now. I know here at Go Engineer, we have a machine set up to print this and the parts have been coming off amazing. The first nylon CF part I held and tried to bend, I just, I was kind of blown away by the rigidity of the part. It wasn't something I was used to feeling from a 3D printed component. It really blew me away. You can see the aesthetics of this part. The nylon 12 CF has this sort of matte luster to it. And in many cases has a great surface finish. Here's a close-up cross-section of that filament. What we're seeing here are the nylon 12 polymer with the chopped carbon fiber uh, components. Here's a close-up. You can see the fibers there. Notice how they're pretty much aligned with the filament. We'll be talking about that here in a bit. So nylon 12 CF, the CF stands for the chop carbon fiber reinforcement. It's 35% by weight. It has, it's one of the highest strength materials and in particular flexural strength, but also the tensile strength and in XY. It is the highest stiffness to weight material. So specific stiffness important for components that we need to lightweight in things like automotive and aerospace, or if you're designing jigs and fixtures to be used by humans. This is an awesome aspect of Nylon 12 CF. It has good heat resistance. The heat deflection temperature is 289 degrees Fahrenheit. The only materials that are superior are going to be Ultim 9085 and 1010 in the PPSF. So Shane has a question. I currently use Nylon 12 GF material. How does the Nylon 6 and Nylon 12 CF compare? I would have to see a spec sheet on the Nylon 12 glass fill that you're talking about, Shane. Is that an SLS material? All right. So Shane's answer was yes. It's a Nylon 12 GF SLS material. The specs that I've seen when it comes to strength are Nylon 12 CF produced by FDM uh, are going to be superior in strength by maybe 20-25% and superior in stiffness probably by 100%. Another material characteristic that is sort of a byproduct of the carbon fiber reinforcement is that it is electrostatic dissipative. And honestly, it's nearly conductive. If we look at the volume resistivity and the surface resisti resistivity, it's a nearly conductive material. And so that's going to lend itself to some particular applications. 
A couple things to of note here, it is highly anisotropic and it is abrasive. So we talked about nylon 12 non-filled being the most isotropic FDM material. Nylon 12 CF is the least isotropic FDM material. And that has to do with the aligning of the fibers in the build. So we're going to see the greatest strength, greatest stiffness in the XY plane. And in the Z plane, we're going to see strength and stiffness similar to the nylon 12. It's also very abrasive because of that glass fill. Machines that are outfitted to print in 12CF need some hardware upgrades. They need hardened tips, hardened, hardened rollers, uh, because the material is more abrasive than anything we've run through these machines. Now, for right now, Nylon 12CF has only been optimized for a 10,000 slice height and to be run on the Fortis 450 alone right now. now like I mentioned, it's mid-April 2017. This material has been out for a month. I would expect some of these things to change, but for now we're on the Fortis 450 at 10,000. Applications, production parts, the coupe de gras of 3D printing, we're, we're getting there. With the nylon 12 CF, we have you know, a stiffness to weight ratio that will rival aluminum. We can start replacing components that we typically machined or cast with 3D printed equivalents. Manufacturing and tooling, you know, particularly in compressive strength, the compressive strength of nylon 12 CF is, exceeds anything that we have available right now. So when we look at applications like sheet metal forming. We used to have to take into account the give of the pattern. Even if it was an Ultim part, it's going to give a little bit. Our, these parts are stiffer. They're not going to give. And so our designs for our tooling can be more intuitive. Jigs and fixtures, they're going to hold their shape better than any other material. ESD components, like I mentioned, ESD uh, electrostatic dissipative components and structural components. The main industries here, automotive, industrial manufacturing, sporting goods, and aerospace. Our use case for Nylon 12 CF comes from a company called Utah Trikes. These guys are local to me. Look at these parts. So these are production parts on trikes that these guys sell. These are nylon CF parts that have been tumbled. Look at how smooth, look at that surface finish. It honestly looks like an injection molded part to me. I hope the resolution of that comes through in the webinar. If it doesn't, I pulled these images from a YouTube video. I definitely recommend you check it out. These guys are printing entire assemblies with nylon 12 CF. You see the knuckle there, you see the, uh, you see the control arms, you see a lot of metal components. This is a part that, and this, really this is an assembly that gets sold, painted and sold as is. Not only is Utah Trikes using nylon 12 CF for their production parts, they're also using it for the jigs and fixtures. The superior stiffness and ruggedness of the material is exactly what they need. Notice how I mentioned that their parts were tumbled and then painted. You see some examples here. Tumbled and then painted red. So who is Utah Trikes? It's, they're the largest reseller of TerraTrike products and also sell a variety of other trike related products. Their problem was the CNC metal prototypes and their jigs and fixtures just took too long to produce, especially in low volume. You know, these guys create custom designs for customers, but they also create low run products as well, you know, maybe a hundred parts. The challenges that they were trying to tackle when they brought on 
Nylon 12 CF in the beta program with Stratasys is they were trying to keep the costs down on low volume production. Their parts were becoming more complicated and they were finding it harder to outsource these parts to local vendors to machine due to that complexity. They wanted the ability to do functional tests on their prototypes. You know, some of these parts that they're prototyping were full on carbon fiber parts. And so without actually making the full on part, you couldn't really do functional prototyping. So the solution, they joined the beta program for Nylon 12 CF and the benefits they saw, I think this might have surprised them, but they were able to just print directly many final production trike parts. In a case study write-up available on the Stratasys website, they talk about one uh, wheelchair in particular. That The bill of material for that wheelchair has 450 different components. 120 of them are 3D printed. So they're really happy with the reliability and the repeatability of the material. They shorten their design process. They were able to go from two months to two weeks because instead of designing around how a part can be machined, they're designing around how a part can be actually used. And they found that they use Nylon 12 CF in all stages of their manufacturing process. We've talked about prototyping. We saw some examples of jigs and fixtures and also some final production parts for short runs. So I did want to go over some of the statistics to finish up here so we can get a little bit of a comparison or context just as to just how good some of these nylon materials are. We have some engineering grade plastics. We have the two nylons and also I threw in polycarbonate as a comparison. And then we have our high performance group with the Ultim 9085 and the Nylon 12 CX. When we look at ultimate tensile strength in X and Y, you can see where the Nylon 6 and the Nylon 12 CF really shine. The Nylon 6 rivals Ultim material, and the Nylon 12 uh, is superior. The Nylon, or the Ultim 1010 is going to just eke out uh, the Nylon 12 CF here. Something to keep in mind is that Nylon in all blends, 12.6 and 12 CF, it uses water soluble support material. Okay, so you can create custom and organic and complex parts and not have to worry about re support removal later on. Ultim uses breakaway support. Okay, so when you look at nylon six and say, yeah, it has about the same strength as 985, in practical terms, I'm probably going to want to use nylon six if strength is my number one concern and part complexity is high. You can see the tensile modulus, nylon 12 CF, it's about three times the modulus that we see in nylon 6 and the Ultim. Heat deflection temperature is almost up to par with the Ultim 9085. Elongation at break, this is where the nylon 12 and nylon 6 really shine. We know these are flexible parts. Elongation at break up in the 30s, near 40%. Look at nylon 12 CF, 1.9%. It is the <laughs> it is the worst performer in this category. Our flexural strength, nylon 12 CF up at almost 21,000 psi. Impact strength. Nylon 12, but really nylon 6 is the winner here. You guys can start to see that nylon 6 really carries its weight in, in some categories. When it comes to strength and toughness, nylon 6 is, is unrivaled in the FDM world. Stiffness to weight ratio or specific stiffness. Nylon 12 CF is essentially off the charts here four to five times greater than the equivalent or the ultimate materials. So really, where do they shine? Nylon 12 is going to be 
you know, in the elongation and fatigue resistance, nylon 6 for strength and toughness, and nylon 12 CF for stiffness and strength. So that about covers the overview of nylon 12, nylon 6, and the new nylon 12 carbon filled materials. Hopefully you guys have some more context to be able to determine which nylon material is the right for your application. Between the three materials, we have a lot of variability in the mechanical properties and their use cases. And so they're very complementary materials and hopefully you'll find a use case for every single one of them. I want to thank you guys for joining today and watching this video and I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.